Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrie's Thrifty Farmhouse. If you're new here, I'm Carrie and I love creating high end farmhouse decor on a thrift store and Dollar Tree budget. Today I'm back with another quick and easy farmhouse DIY perfect for the spring and Easter season a large flower basket for my front door. And you know the drill, if you like what you see, I would truly love for you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps support my channel so I can bring you more budget DIYs. And if this is your first time here, be sure to introduce yourself in the comments below. I'd love to connect. So as I mentioned, I'm constructing a large basket for my front door. The handle of the basket will be made out of a hula hoop from Dollar Tree, and the main part of the basket is foam board. The short side of the poster board is 20 inches, which was perfect for the width of the top of the basket. I cut the board to 15 inches in the other direction, which will be the height of the basket. Then I wanted it to be slightly tapered at the bottom, so I measured in 4.5 inches on each side. Then I drew a line from the top corners to the marks and cut the board with a Dollar Tree snap blade. Next, I lined the bottom of the basket up to the hula hoop to gauge where I wanted to cut the hoop and made marks with a sharpie. Then I grabbed my wood burning tool which has an X-Acto knife attachment to create a hot knife. This is perfect for cutting through plastic. If you don't have a hot knife, you can easily make one on your own by holding a flame up to a snap blade for about 15 seconds. This will heat it up enough that it will melt through plastic in the same way. I wanted the basket to look like old weathered wicker, so I'm using the darker version of the nautical rope available at Dollar Tree to wrap it. It comes in lengths that are about nine and a half feet long, and I thought it would line up well enough around the hoop that I didn't think I needed to paint the hoop first, so I skipped that step. I used hot glue every five to six wraps, and I found it easiest to loosely wind the rope around several times, then scrunch it and tighten it for the gluing. This worked well, and I worked my way all the way through, and it took exactly three packs of the rope. While I continue wrapping, I'll mention that this video is a part of the Keep It Simple Sunday collaboration with Melissa Makes It DIY and Jackie Burns Creations. I'll link both their channels in the description box below as well as the playlist for the challenge. So be sure to check them out and have a look at what everyone comes up with. The handle wasn't holding its shape, so you'll see I used twine and tied the two ends together, which worked well. It almost looked like a bow to shoot arrows. Next, it was time to cover the basket. I had this roll of burlap from Walmart, and I thought it would be fun to weave the fabric like a basket, so I cut the fabric in strips that were about three inches wide. I laid enough strips vertically to have a couple inches on either side to be able to wrap it around the edges of the basket, and did the same with the strips horizontally. Next, I followed a weaving pattern similar to lattice for a pie crust. I folded back every other horizontal strip and laid down a vertical strip. Then I returned the horizontal strips to their original position and folded back the opposite strips and laid down the next piece. I don't think I'm doing the greatest job of explaining this, but I do think the video shows it well, so hopefully you can follow along. I continued with this weaving pattern until I had fabric wide enough to cover the foam board. I didn't think I had many spaces in my woven burlap, but just to be sure, I painted the poster board with the mineral color from Waverly Chalk Paint so there wouldn't be any white that peeked through. Once it was dry, I laid the painted side down against the woven burlap and folded the sides around and glued them with hot glue. The only thing to be careful of in this step is to not pull too hard on the pieces closest to each edge that run in the same direction as the edge. That may cause them to separate from the other pieces creating spaces in the weave, which we don't want. Also, because of the woven nature of the fabric, glue can easily sneak through, so I would recommend using finger covers or a tool to press down to avoid burning yourself. 
When I attached the handle to the basket to give it some extra strength, I first glued down an extra strip of the burlap fabric along the top edge and glued the ends of the handle down to that. Then I wrapped the ends of the fabric around the handles and glued those down as well. This held really well. And then I realized that I had made a big goof. You guys, I glued the handle down backwards. So when I turned the basket forwards, I could see all the places where I had glued the nautical rope to the handle. So I had to change my plan a little for how I was going to embellish the basket. I decided that I could be strategic with some florals and glue them directly to the imperfections and that would disguise them enough. So I grabbed these white wispy flowers because they were tall enough to reach the spots I needed to hide. I didn't like their leaves though, so I just deconstructed the flowers, removed the leaves, and then put the flowers back on the stem. Easy peasy. Then I was testing out some different greens for filler and really liked these lighter green fern-like stems that had these yellowish berries and leaves. I thought they were a great contrast to the white wispy florals. Then, in typical fashion, I left the florals unfinished and skipped to another project with the ribbon. I had this fun beige and ivory gingham that I thought looked nice. However, it was the very end of the roll, so I knew I had to conserve it. I glued one piece around the top of the basket and used just enough to be able to glue around the edge. Then I created a small loop bow with tails and tied it with a piece of twine. I added dovetails to the ends and the bow was complete. Now back to the flowers. I started with the greenery stems and first glued the stem with the hot glue. Then I added a piece of burlap over the top to give it some extra hold. I repeated this with the other two greenery stems. For the white stems, I first placed my flowers from the front so that I could strategically place them to hide the imperfections on the handle. I tried to glue just the green stem so as to avoid gluing the actual petals down. Then I turned it over and glued the stems at the bottom and the back. I used the same method of gluing the stem down first, then adding some extra hold with the piece of burlap over the top. And with that, my piece was complete. And here it is on my front door. This wasn't exactly my original plan, but I actually think it turned out better. So hopefully your takeaway today is that just because you mess something up doesn't mean you have to scrap the whole project. You may even end up with something better. Thanks for joining me today. If you found me from the Keep It Simple Sunday playlist, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my content. I have lots more spring DIYs headed your way, which you won't want to miss. So stay tuned for those. See you next time. Bye.